Welcome to episode 123 of the Clarity Compressed podcast. And these times have been so heavy and they've been so stressful that I thought it would be great to let's just talk a little shop this week on the podcast. And we have a very special guest. We're making our way through the fog of life and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. This week we're going to do a Paul's pick, and Paul's pick for this week is metaphors. Actually, it should probably be Paul's pick are metaphors. No, my my pick for this week is the the mechanism of a metaphor. I think metaphors are fantastic because they make a point really quickly and without giving you all the detail. You actually have some context and some detail, and it's delivered in a metaphor, which is typically a shorter piece of information. Let me give you an example. So we had a live stream event just the other day, and the chairman of the National Auto Dealer Association said, bike races are won on the uphills. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I already know what he means. If you're gonna win a bike race, you have to train to make sure that you can do well when you're riding uphill because it's easy to ride downhill and everybody can ride downhill and everybody can pedal when the ground is level, but only the people that really prepare are the ones that do well on the uphills and those who do well on the uphills are going to win the race. Oh, okay, I get it. And so that kind of gave us encouragement to say, yes, we're in an uphill right now. Now's the time we get to win, right? Let's dig in and let's show everyone that we were ready for the uphill. All of that because you said, Bike races are won on the uphills. That's why my pick for this week are metaphors. So as you know, the last couple of podcasts have been very heartfelt. It's been really dark and I've been talking intently to the camera and sharing from my heart. Uh, this week, I thought it would be great to um, just talk a little shop. And so my guest today is John Lincoln. He is the CEO founder of a marketing agency out of San Diego called Ignite Visibility. Uh, if you've ever been to San Diego, you know, first of all, it's just a beautiful place. Uh, secondly, if you know anything about the business environment in San Diego, um, it's very competitive. It's one of the biggest chambers of commerce in the world or in the country. And um, there's just a lot of great companies in the area. And John's company actually was voted best places to work in the midst of all those other great companies. So I think that says something. This is a company that really understands the marketing ecosystem. They understand the consumer life cycle and, and like why the things in our lives as consumers, right? How different things happen in our lives and they change our mindset, they change the way we think, they change the way we feel. Well, he spends a lot of time to understand those things so that he can help companies bring the consumer the most value at the right time. And he's by far way smarter than me when it comes to the details of marketing and getting in the dirt and looking at the data and interpreting the data. So we get into a great conversation, I think, about, um, you know, well, first, actually, we get to talk a little bit about how he has navigated this crisis with his company of almost 100 people, best place to work, so how he's kept the fire going throughout throughout this pandemic. And I think that's always beneficial for other leaders and business owners to hear. We like to hear what other people are doing, so maybe informs or gives us some insights that allows us to operate our companies a little better. We talk about that a little bit in the beginning. And then we get into marketing and we get into brand and why the story that your brand tells makes a massive difference on the dollars that you spend to try to get the message out. And finally, at the end, we talk a little bit about what's over the horizon in marketing, what's over the horizon in uh, people communicating with one another and buying and selling. We touch on TikTok just a little bit. First time that's ever come up in the podcast, so it's good to get a little, little foot in the door of TikTok. And uh, just all in all, John's a really, really nice guy, really caring individual, and he's a surfer, which just makes him that much cooler. I hope you enjoy this conversation with me and Jonathan Lincoln. John, thank you so much for joining us and giving us some of your time, which is definitely a busy season for every business owner and CEO. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here. So um, 
without it goes without saying, and I've been asking all my guests this. Um, so you're the CEO of your company. You've been recognized as one of the best place to work in, in San Diego, which is a very competitive place for great companies to work. So I think that's a real um, a real uh, sizable accomplishment. So congratulations on doing that. Um, and obviously that's something that took a lot of intentionality. And in through the COVID pandemic and all the unrest that's going on, I'm sure it takes a lot more, and I know it takes a lot more intentionality to lead your team through it. So can you just give us some insight you know, from your seat about the size of your organization and what the progression has looked like from when the pandemic hit and you had to start making changes to now? Yeah, so we are 90 full-time employees now. And, um, you know, the whole size of the organization with everybody touching it is more like, you know, 150 and, you, you know, being a great place to work is something we've worked really, really hard on because the agency space can be kind of tough. Sometimes it kind of goes in waves based off of how, how nice the clients are, or how fantastic they are and, and, you know, how many you have and stuff like that. Um, so one of the things we've learned is to really, really listen to our staff. It's been uh, a huge game changer for us, you know. So, um, you know, we try to figure out, uh, you know, what what they need. And so we do surveys on a quarterly basis and find out all their pain points and really just try to uh, involve everybody. So that's been good. And that's led to a lot of education. We do these Innovation Fridays where, you know, we'll have speakers come in and we'll get food and, you know, we kind of all get together, you know, as a team and stuff like that. But all that, of course, went away with COVID. And COVID um, has been pretty tough for a lot of people, including us. And at one point, you know, we were really down to the wire. You know, we had probably 50% of clients impacted, 30% significantly impacted. And so, you know, we were we were really struggling for a minute. And then, you know, we kind of pivoted our marketing and and really doubled down and tripled down on our marketing, got to this point where we started making up a lot of losses and and things like that. But I think one of the main things we did is we communicated weekly and in some cases multiple times a week myself to the team you know, telling them exactly what was going on, full transparency, not babying anybody, letting Mm -hmm. them know exactly how much cash we had in the bank, you know, all all kinds of things like that. Yeah. And I just, I didn't know any other way to handle it, you know? So we did that. And I really, really, just to sum that up for a second, what you're saying is like, you really moved into, you kind of pivoted into a very transparent leadership style where you're just saying like, here are all the cards, like understanding that when people don't see the cards, they assume the worst. So it sounds like you got more transparent than you typically would have been. Is that what I'm hearing? That's 100% right. Yeah, okay. we more transparent than we've ever been before. And, you know, with so many people losing their jobs and getting laid off. And, you know, so what we ended up doing is at one point we did ask people to take a, a small pay cut. And then that was only one pay period. And then we were able to bring it back and, and then we didn't have to let anybody go. So we were, we were really, really proud of that. And I think we earned some goodwill through that. For sure. But I, I think transparency was the maybe the biggest thing that – and that's a good good thing to, to latch on to. Yeah. So when you're coming out of it now, um, you know, the pressure starting to release. Uh, you know, economy is opening back up. You can go eat out at restaurants again. Um, yeah. what's, what's life look like in, inside your, your office, inside your walls? Like what's the balance you're starting to strike? Are people coming in every day or half of them? Like I think most business owners are just interested in what, what's working out for other people. We have four people in the office right now and, you know, we usually have, you know, 90 people. And so it's, it's very, very dense, tons of, tons of people. Mm-hmm. We're, we're not doing that. What we're doing is um, we're going to allow each of the staff to come in one day a week if they want to, mm-hmm. it's not mandatory. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you, you divide 90 by five and, you know, half of them want to come in and it's just kind of a place that they can come in and they can get away and, and use the office. And we've really shifted our mentality. You know, I think we've learned how to work pretty much 100% virtually, mm-hmm. and I'm much more comfortable with it than I was before. I miss seeing everybody a lot. Mm-hmm. I like the office office environment a lot, but you know, I, I don't think we're going to be that company where we, we really want everybody to be in the office all day, every single day again, um, at least not for another six months to a year. And, and even then, I think we'll be more flexible than, than ever before, you know. So, so prior to this, uh, I think what you're saying is actually resonates a lot with me. Yeah. 